Yeah. Alright, uh, sh- Number six, it says the ratio of the corresponding mid segments of two similar trapezoids is four to five. What is the ratio of their areas? If you know the ratio of the sides, or in this case the mid segments, and you want the ratio of the areas, what do you do to those numbers? Square. Yes, square them both. Okay, so since four squared is 16 and five squared is 25, the ratio of their areas will be? 16 to 25. Okay? That makes way more sense. Now, number seven is the same thing but backwards. It says the ratio of the areas is 4 to 9. So, since they're starting by giving you the ratio of the areas, if you want to know the ratio of the sides, square root it. And the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. Hello. Hello. So, the answer is 2 lines. 2 lines. 2 to 2 lines. No, 2 to 3. Okay? So, yeah, that's fine. I know this stuff is a little bit. Ooh. Sir, eight and nine. Okay, number eight. You have two things that are similar. We don't know what kind of shapes they are. We don't really care. Only that they are similar. And we also know that two of the corresponding sides, uh, one of them is six centimeters, and the other one is. 10 centimeters, okay? Then we know the area of A, B, C, D, E is 320. So we want to find the area of <coughs> the other guy. Okay? Any bright ideas? Don't we find that ratio of what? 6 and 10 proportion? Set up a proportion. Okay, set me up a proportion. Go ahead. You're going to roll. Okay, so he says 320 over x equals 6 over 10. And he says this, bless you, because the 320 and the AC go together, so both they're both on top. And the FGHIJ and the 10 go together, so both they're both on the bottom. Unfortunately, he has failed. What does he have to do before he sets up this proportion? Uh, square root areas. Is this ratio, is this uh, sides or area? Sides. So if they tell me the sides, then I have to square it. Square it. So before you set up this proportion, so it's you have to one. square both of those numbers. So instead of being like, 320 like over x small. equals 6 over 10, it's 320 over x equals 36 over 100. Or I did that, but if you wanted to, you could have reduced the 6 over 10 first to 3 over 5, then square them, and I think it would still work out. Okay? So now you have this proportion cross multiply and divide. <coughs> and what do you find out the uh, area of the other shape? Is? No, I don't like that one. Bit. Yeah, it is. It's got to be bigger. 888. It's got to be bigger than, oh, 888. I thought you said 88. Does it come out to be? I need confirmation from huh? one of the yes. rectangles and trapezoid of girls in the middle. Hey, why is it called the ADA point A repeating? Take your bait until nine. Uh, the only reason why it keeps repeating until nine is because that's the last number on the screen, so around the very end. If you had a bigger screen, it would keep repeating even more. Because it repeats. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 uh. Oh my god. <laughs> Rich and I are, you know, we're tight. Yeah. Been through a lot together. Been in the oh. trenches together. <laughs> We've been in war together. Oh All right, number nine. Stefan is helping his mother retile the kitchen floor. The tiles are four by four square inches. So let's make them green. Okay. 
The kitchen is, is a square, and the area of the kitchen floor is the kitchen is a square, and the area is 144 square feet. How many tiles will be needed to cover the floor? So there's a couple of different ways you could do this. Yep, you could do a proportion thing. Okay. Um, what's the area of this square? 16. Square feet. Okay. Uh, what is the, if this is 14, 144 square feet, what is the length of each side? 12. Okay. So you could say that the ratio between the sides is 3 to 1. Why do I even need to do this? What's the easier way than using a proportion? Yeah. Oh, never mind, never mind. What were you going to say? Yeah, I want to hear the other one. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Okay, so she just went ahead and figured out the area of the kitchen floor in square inches and then divided by the square inches of the tile so you don't have to get into the craziness of the whole proportions and square and things, right? So that might be a little bit easier. The only problem is. If I want to change 144 square feet into square inches, what do I have to multiply by? Yeah, it's not 12, but 144. That's a big number. Depends on your definition of big. Oh, that is big. Okay. okay. So, uh, what's 144 times 144? That's a big number. Yeah. Did I give the other 20,000? 700. Okay, yeah, so whoops, that's going to be square inches. And then what? And then what? Uh, and then since each square, I guess you guys probably can't see that, each square is 16 square inches. If you take the total area of the kitchen floor and divide it by 16, then that'll tell you how many squares fit there. So, uh, Al, Ali, do you understand why to multiply by 144, not just 12? Okay. Can we do? Yes, Alyssa. Can we do four and five? Yes, we can. Divide the big number by 16. 4 and 5, you said? Yeah. Maybe 4 and 5. What's up, cutie? Why are you sitting here? He's comfortable. What did you call it? Cutie? <laughs> <laughs> well, is that too far? <laughs> we call me cutie, but I don't know, maybe I've got something going on. Oh my god. Alright, let me here go back. Yeah, we do. Alright. Okay, let's take a look at number four. Okay, number four. They want you to figure out the ratio of the areas. Now, there's just like in the kitchen tile problem, there's two different ways you could do this. When I was helping Richard with this yesterday, what he wanted to do is he was thinking, well, they give us the circumference. If they tell you the circumference, then that means the diameter is what? Six. The diameter is 12, which means the radius is six, which means the area of this big circle would be 36 pi. So you could figure out that area. And then divide it by, same thing here, if the circumference is 2 pi, that means the diameter is 2, two and the radius is yeah. 1, which means the area of that would be yeah. 1 pi, and 36 pi divided by pi is 36 over 1. So you could get the answer that way, and that would be fine. Okay? The way that you would use it with proportions, or figure it out with proportions, is if the circumference is 12 pi, and the circumference of the little one is 2 pi, what's that ratio reduced to? 6 over 1. 6 over 1. <coughs> and since that's the ratio of the circumferences, to get the ratio of the areas, what do I have to do to these numbers? Square. Square, square them. Or square them. Right. Yeah. So 6 squared is 36, and 1 squared is 1, and so you get the same answer going that way. What? No, because the pi is canceled. What's our next Yes. Time? Tomorrow. What? No. What? 
Can I go back to number three? Yeah. yeah. Can I do five first? It's crazy, day. Totally out of order, day. I don't want to do one, two, three. I want you to do one, two, three. I did. Oh, actually, I did one. I started two. Okay, now that little trick that we just did with the uh, circles will not work with the rectangles because... They only give us one of the dimensions of the rectangle, so you would not be able to figure out the areas and then just compare them directly. So you have to do it this goofy way, okay? So what is the ratio of the side of the bigger rectangle to the smaller rectangle? 10 to 4. 10 to 4, which reduces to what, Richard? 5 to 2, okay? And then that's the ratio of the sides. So if you want to change that into the ratio of the areas, what do you have to do? Square both of them, so that would be 25 to 4. Okay? Alright? Wait, what did you just do? How did I get that? I went 10 over 4 reduces to 5 over 2. Okay? So that's the ratio of the sides. Then if I want the ratio of the area, since area is square feet, square inches, square meters, I have to square it. Get 25 more. Okay? Alright, I'm going to call up this area. Will you pass it forward, please?